Amen. I want you to know it is so good to see your eyes and to see some eyes that I haven't seen for a while. So welcome, and welcome to all those who are watching by way of uh, YouTube this morning or on the website. We, we welcome you here. When they said, let us go to the house of my God, my heart leaped for joy. When I woke up this morning and, and remembered that it was Sunday, you all like me, you have, when you wake up in the morning, sometimes you have to walk backwards down memory lane to remember what day of the week it is. But when I remembered that it was Sunday, I was glad. I have no real announcements from the church office, but I do have one a personal privilege, if I might. I have been a blood donor since I was 21 years old, and I don't have any idea at this point how many gallons that would be. But I have gone consistently, even even through COVID, I have been a regular blood donor. And the last time I, I donated, there was a sign that says, we are in need of platelets. So they said, are you donating whole blood or platelets? So it doesn't matter to me, whichever's needed. So this, this Tuesday, I will, for the first time, be a platelet donor. And I'm, I'm a little apprehensive about that because it's a two and a better than a two hour process. So I'm, I'm just so uh, prayer for, for this little wimp from Ballard's Branch that, uh, that I can lie still and just be quiet, just keep my mouth shut for two hours. That's, that's, that's a challenge for me. With that said, would you now join your hearts with mine as we prepare for prayer? Thank you for days like today, when in the middle of the dead of winter, we can expect temperatures in the 70s. Thank you for memories, Father, as March comes rolling in, memories of snow in March, memories of warm weather in March, in those years gone by, when the, the trees begin to bud and the, the hope of spring just blooms out all around us, and the hope of spring springs forth in our hearts. So this year, Lord, this year of, of um, many changes, many, many new things happening in our lives, just help us to remember that you are the God of new beginnings, and you are the God who is and was and is to come. You are and have been forever. Well, we can't explain that. When a child asks me it, in daycare this past week, where did God come from? I said, don't know. That's a question to put in your, to ask God. But and when you get to heaven, you ask him, where did you come from? We just have the confidence of those children of knowing that you are, and that you will take care of your creation. So, Lord, thank you for the concerns of our hearts. Thank you for those things that you have put within us that, the things that trouble your heart, and you trouble our hearts with those same concerns. Lord, may we ever, ever be ready in prayer to bring those things to you and to love each other. Father, thank you for that prayer that Jesus taught so many centuries ago when he told his disciples to pray in this manner. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now I say to you as Christians, what do you believe? 
Would you stand with me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, born of the suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now turn and say hello to your neighbors and welcome. Thank you.
Good morning, friends. Good morning. Are you guys going to help me? Good morning. <laughs> now, I need your help. We're going to play a little game. I got some mystery bags here, and I want to let you reach your hand in and see what's inside. But you can't use your eyes. Just your hands. Are you ready? Okay, don't, don't peek. James, don't peek. Okay, let's see what's in the first one. You ready? What do you feel? What's in there? A, a bracelet. You think it's a bracelet? Why? Because it feels like it. Okay, let's see. Put your hand in there, but don't look. No, don't look. He's cheating. What do you feel? I can't pull it out. What is that? Cold. It felt cold. That's a good answer, James. Well, you want to see what it is? What do you think it was, James? A bracelet. I think it's a bracelet, too. It is a bracelet. They were able to guess right. Okay, well, hold on. I got another secret bag. You ready? Okay, James is going to go first this time. Don't be. What does it feel like? A ball. A ball? It feels like an orange. So Ellie thinks it's an orange, and James says it feels like a ball. Let's see what it is. It's an orange! Okay. An orange does kind of feel like a ball, though, doesn't it? Okay, it's Ellie's turn to go first. Fuzzy balls. See if you can guess. <laughs> Leave it to James. Cheat. So those are pom poms, but they feel soft and fuzzy, right? And you weren't, you probably weren't sure exactly what they were. James, can you go get that one and bring it back? So today we're talking about. Judgment and judging. Do you know what the word judgment means? Or judging? No. Well, it means when we decide what is right or wrong or good or bad. And in our scripture lesson this morning, Jesus teaches us that that's not our job. Because sometimes we don't have the whole story. Like with this orange, James thought it was a ball because it was round. And it kind of felt like a ball. But did James have the whole story? You, you guessed what it was. But sometimes we don't know all the pieces of the puzzle. So Jesus tells us we need to not judge others. It's not our job to decide what is right and wrong. Would you pray with me? Okay. Let's pray. Amen.
Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Matthew chapter 7. I'll be reading the first five verses. You will likely recognize these words from the Sermon on the Mount. I'm going to ask you as you are able, if you would stand with me as we show reverence to the reading of the scripture. Do not judge, or you too will be judged. For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck of sawdust in your brother's eye and pay no attention to the plank in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when all the time there is a plank in your own eye? You hypocrite. First, take the plank out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to remove the speck from your brother's eye. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say together, thanks be to God. Please be seated. Just wanted to remind you this morning that during these days of Lent, we will be, I will be using the book, uh, Give Up Something Really Bad for Lent, uh, as um, the jumping off point for uh, these discussions. And um, I can highly recommend the book to you. And I uh, also want you to know that when you footnote it, you're not plagiarizing. So that's my footnote this morning. Uh, from Dr. Moore's book. He opens this discussion by telling the story. He was conducting the funeral for a girl who had grown up in his church. Sadly enough, the funeral was on the girl's 17th birthday. Her name was Ellen. And they were gathered in that church to say their goodbyes and to deal with their grief. Knowing that Ellen had taken her own life. Word had gotten around in their town that Ellen, the one that so often they called Miss Goody Two-Shoes, had not been as good as they thought. On the one hand, Ellen was a cheerleader. She was the secretary of her class. She was in the honor society. 
everybody seemed to like her and look up to her. So why had she taken her own life? The suicide note simply said, I cannot take it anymore. You see, for the days leading up to her death, a rumor had begun circulating. A rumor that said that she had been out all night, that a neighbor had seen her get out of a sports car with an older man, that her hair was messed up, that her clothes were messed up, and she wasn't walking very straight. Word spread like wildfire. Everywhere she went, people gave her that look, or people whispered behind her back, and she couldn't take it. And she ended her life. The truth was, she had been out all night. She was at the hospital with her grandmother, giving the rest of the family some relief by taking the night shift. She had been delivered back home in a shiny sports car with an older man. The man driving the sports car happened to be her uncle who was bringing her home after she spent the night at the hospital. People had harshly condemned this young woman and while rumors and lies were flying, the truth never got off the ground. Ellen had done nothing wrong. In fact, she had done something right. She went to the medicine cabinet and emptied every bottle of medicine that she could find into herself. And she took her life. An extreme example, yes. But a reality that we see lived out far too often. We're quick to judge. Particularly so if someone is looked up to in the eyes of others. We want to somehow bring them down to our own level. So one of our challenges during this Lenten season is to give up judgments, especially those that are harsh and condemning. The word judgment is used many times in the New Testament. One usage of it is simply to talk about our discernment. And we have to use judgment all the time, don't we? Can I trust this person walking towards me? Am I too close to the vehicle in front of me? Would this menu choice or that menu choice be better for my health. Is this a good use of the extra money that I found in my wallet? We judge, we discern all the time. It's part of being human. But there's another understanding of judgment, and it's the one Jesus used here. word that we typically call condemnation. Do we judge others? Do we condemn others? A 
And it's important because Jesus said, don't do it. So why do we do it? I referenced a work by a psychologist this week who says that one of the signs of being judgmental is making a lot of negative moral evaluations of others. I'm better than that guy. Having a moral rating system that is skewed in your own favor. I'm a pretty good guy. Jumping to negative moral conclusions about others. Being inclined to believe the worst. Can you believe she did that? Moving very quickly from judgments of the form, this action is morally wrong to ones of the form, this person is morally bankrupt. Or acting as as if you can know that what another person did was wrong, even though you know much less about the situation than the person who made the decision. Give up harsh, condemning judgments for rent. Here's some things to take with us today. The first being this, avoid making hasty, condescending judgments based on rumor. How often do we run with a rumor only to find out later that the rumor was wrong. And what do we need to do to slow ourselves down and perhaps even stop it? I remember sitting in a church staff meeting one time and a particular family was driving us all crazy. They were equal opportunity crazy drivers. The children's minister was upset. The youth minister was upset. The secretary was upset. The associate pastor was upset. And quite frankly, my patience had worn a little thin too. And as we talked about what might be going on, we quickly started making judgments in areas that we didn't have the whole story. And it was the 25-year-old in the room who said to the rest of us, I'm not comfortable with this. This feels like gossip and being judgmental. And he was right. One of the things that Dr. Moore notes in his book is that there are some questions that we always need to ask when we hear a rumor. First, Is it the truth? Second, is it fair to all concerned? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? Fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? If we could let those rules go to work in our lives, our lives would be so much more peaceful and so much less complicated. We live in a world where folks want the news, folks want the headlines immediately. And sometimes it takes a little time for the truth to come out. As followers of Jesus Christ, We should always be the patient ones who wait for truth and don't contribute to pouring gas on a smoldering fire. Then there's this, avoid being unkind and unsympathetic in our judgments. It's a human tendency to rejoice in the downfall of others. Why? Because somehow in our convoluted way of thinking, we think if somebody else looks worse, then we must surely look better. You know,
know what Jesus said was pretty funny? You're going to help somebody get the speck of sawdust out of their eye when you have the equivalent of a board sticking out of your eye? And Jesus says, deal with the plank in your own eye. Then maybe, just maybe, you can help somebody get the sawdust out of their eye. It's about pleading for mercy and not for justice. And we all understand that. We want to judge everyone else based on the facts, but we want to be judged ourselves based on mercy. Do we see the contradiction? Do we see how damaging that can be to our relationships? We hold everyone to a higher standard than the standard to which we hold ourselves. And then there's this. Our judgments may boomerang. In this crazy political environment in which we're in, all of the different 24-hour news channels save videotape of somebody saying something so that later they can play back their words to condemn them when something happens. You watch the tit for tat. And I personally am reminded of what Gandhi once said, an eye for an eye leaves us all blind. The story is told of a teacher who, of course from a different era, but he had some very strict rules in his class. One rule was that as they went around the room and each person stood to read, They would stand up good and straight. They would rest their right arm to their side and they would hold the book with their left arm and read to the class. One boy stood up to read, holding the book with his right arm. The teacher said, I taught you better than that. I taught you to use your left hand. And the boy simply said, I can't, sir. The teacher said, that is an order. Put that book in your left hand. And the boy said, I can't, sir. And finally, the teacher went and shoved him back into his desk at which point he saw something he had not noticed before. The boy's left sleeve had been tucked into his pocket because he didn't have a left arm. Sometimes our judgments come back and bite us. A boomerang. And the truth of the matter is, every one of us sitting here today, every one of us hearing this at home, we all know that we too have an empty sleeve. What is it about us that we hope others don't discover? When we all have our challenges as human beings. May we not judge others in order, Jesus said, that you yourself will not be judged. Do not judge, he said, or you too will be judged. 
For in the same way you judge others, you will be judged, and with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. There is that story in the Old Testament in the book of Esther regarding a man who built a gallows on which he intended to hang all the Jews in the city. The gallows was used, but it was used to hang the man who built the gallows. Sometimes our judgments boomerang on us. And then there's this. We all know this. Let's remind ourselves of it. Judgment belongs to God. Judgment belongs to God. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. I will repay. Sometimes waiting on God for vengeance seems like a nearly impossible task. But judgment belongs to God. Deciding whether you go to heaven or hell, that's above my pay grade, folks. You deciding whether I go to heaven or hell, that's above your pay grade. And aren't you glad that's the case? We don't get to pass the ultimate judgment on each other. And if we're wise, we won't pass judgment on each other at all. Because folks, we all have some bad days. We all have days that we wish we could just forget. And then we have those glorious days, those wonderful days, when we wish the whole world could see what wonderful people we are. And yet, if we're not we will judge our brother or sister based on their worst days instead of their best. That's why Jesus said, just get out of the judgment business. If you don't pass judgment on others, you will not be judged yourself. If we can give up something really bad for them, Something far worse for us than chocolate or some of the other stuff we're trying to give up. Let's give up judging other people. Because, my friends, it's ultimately an act of faith. If I believe that God is who He says He is, and He does not need my help, to judge another one of his children. Would you pray with me? Lord, during these days of self-examination, help us to see those places where we have allowed ourselves to become inflexible and judgmental. Lord, we need mercy ourselves. And so help us that we will be merciful to others. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. And may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. For now in his peace.